Working with spheres in Blender can be a challenge if UV mapping is required for terrain displacement. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a realistic moon with mountains and craters using a perfectly UV unwrapped sphere that we will make from a grid object. We'll also create the Earth using an icosphere and the new spherical mapping in cycles. The required textures are in the public domain and are available from links in the description of this video. The textures are corrected for best quality results in whole body renders. OK, let's get to it. We start with a new file from the file menu. Save the file to avoid losing any work. Delete the default cube by pressing X and confirming. The 3D cursor should be in the center. If you move it by mistake, reposition it with Shift S, cursor to center. In Preferences, Interface Pane, turn on Auto Perspective for orthogonal projection in top, front and side views. Now switch to the Cycles Render Engine from the Render Engine menu. Select the lamp and in Lamp Properties, click the Sun button. Click Use Nodes, then set size to 0.01, turn on Multiple Importance and set Strength to 4. In 3D View, press N for Properties and set Location to X-5 Y minus 5, Z 0, and rotation to X 90, Y 0, Z 0. The main thing that matters here is that Z location is 0, so the lighting is angled correctly, as if along the ecliptic. In Outliner, name the lamp Sun. Now the Moon. Press numpad 7 for top view. Add a grid mesh object and in tool shelf, Set subdivisions to X64, Y24, Radius 1. Tap to Edit Mode and with Ctrl R, add a loop on top and bottom ends of the mesh, very close to the last row of vertices, but still sufficiently separate so that they are not lost when we remove doubles. These loops will help prevent UV mapping artifacts at the poles. We're basically minimizing the artifacted area as much as possible. Press A twice to select all, then U for the UV mapping menu and choose Unwrap. Now press R to rotate, followed by X, enter 90. Then R to rotate again, followed by Z, enter 180. Now move the mesh with G, followed by Y, enter 1. Then press R to rotate, followed by Y, enter 90. Press space and enter warp. In tool shelf, set warp angle to 180. Press R to rotate, followed by Y, enter minus 90. Press space and enter warp again. Set warp angle to 360. Press A twice to select all, then W and choose Remove Doubles. To improve subdivision of the object, add a loop with Ctrl R in each of the five rows of faces up from the equator and four down. Then press A to select all, change pivot point to 3D cursor, and press Shift Alt S, enter 1, to correct the shape back to perfect sphere. Switch back to median pivot point. Tap to object mode. In tool shelf, click the smooth shading button. In outliner, rename the object Moon. In modifiers panel, add a subdivision surface modifier and set View to 2, Render to 5. If you don't have enough RAM for the required resolution, set Render to 4 or delete parts of the mesh that will not be visible in the render. Add a Displace modifier. 
set strength to 0.01. Click the new texture button, then the button at the right to go to the texture settings. Click the open button and navigate to the moon relief map PNG image available from the description of this video. In image mapping section, set extension to extend, avoiding a seam in the texture. Return to the modifiers panel and set texture coordinates of the displace modifier to UV from the pop-up menu. In materials panel, click new and name the material moon. Press Shift F3 for the node editor. Set diffuse roughness to 0.1. Add a Mix RGB node from the Color submenu and connect it to the Diffuse node. Set Factor to 0.8. Click Color 1 and set it to hex value B2AEAA. Duplicate the node with Shift D and connect the duplicate to Color 2 of the original. Set the mode to Add from the pop-up menu and factor to 0.6. This can be increased to 1, particularly in renders of the crescent moon. Add an image texture node and connect it to color 1 of the Add node. Click the folder icon and navigate to the Moon Color Map PNG image available from the description of this video. Set interpolation from the second pop-up menu to cubic. Duplicate the node with Shift D and connect the duplicate to color 2 of the Add node. Then select the Moon Relief Map PNG texture from the Image pop-up menu. Also connect the node to the displacement input of the Material Output node. We need to reduce the displacement effect. So add an RGB Curves node from the Color submenu and drop it on the line leading to displacement, connecting the new node. Select the left point on the curve and set the second value to 0.46. Select the right point and set the second value to 0.54. Now add a texture coordinate node from the input submenu and connect the UV output to the two image texture nodes. That's the moon material done. Back to 3D view. We're going to set up the camera and render settings for moon renders that can then be used for compositing into other images. In Render Panel, set dimensions to 1000 by 1000, 100% resolution. Set Render Samples to 30, Clamp Direct to 4, Indirect 3. In Light Paths, set Diffuse Bounces to 0, we don't need them. In Film Pane, click Transparent to obtain an alpha channel. In Post Processing, set Dither to 1. In World Panel, remove the world material, we don't need it. In Outliner, select the camera, and in Camera Panel, click the Orthographic option. Set Scale to 2.2, since the size should be 32. Select the Moon, then press R to rotate, followed by Z, enter 188, so that we're looking at the side of the Moon that is always facing the Earth. Press numpad 1 for front view, then the period key on the numpad to zoom in on the object. From the view menu, choose Align Active Camera to View. We're now looking through the camera. In Outliner, select the Sun, then in 3D view, switch to Rendered Shading. In Properties, click and drag in the Z rotation field to rotate the Sun. The new crescent moon looks nice, so let's try that. Press F12 to render. And there it is, looking very nice.
If you click the first image icon in the header, you can see the alpha transparency. And you can save the rendered image from the image menu. Press escape to return to 3D view. For an earthshine effect on the darkened part of the lunar disk, duplicate the sun with shift D and rename the duplicate earthshine light. In properties, change its Z rotation to 0. In the lamp panel, set size to 2 and strength to 1. Click the color and set it to hex value 36414D. You can play with these settings later. They will vary according to actual use. Select and rotate the sun again on the z-axis for a waning crescent. Then F12 to render. And again, it looks great. Return to 3D view. Press Z twice to return to solid shading. Save the file and we're done with the task of creating the moon as seen in the sky here on Earth. We can go one step further and create a cosmic scene also involving the Earth. From the file menu choose Save As and save the file under a new name. I'll use Moon and Earth. Press numpad 0 to exit camera view. Select the moon, then press M, enter 2 to move the moon to layer 2 for now. In Outliner, hide the Earthshine light object by clicking its eye icon and also turn off its render icon. The Earth is easy to make because it does not require UV unwrapping. You may think that the best object for this is a UV sphere, but it is not. A UV sphere has triangles at top and bottom and is difficult to subdivide efficiently. You can see the problem with the shading. An icosphere, on the other hand, subdivides evenly and without artifacts. Because Blender now features spherical mapping in cycles, an icosphere is the best object for cases where UV mapping is not required. So, add an icosphere and in tool shelf set subdivisions to 6, then click the smooth shading button. In Outliner, rename the object Earth. In Materials panel, click the New button and name the material Earth. Change the shader from the Surface pop-up menu to Mix Shader. Set Factor to 0.05. Set the first shader from the pop-up menu to Diffuse. Set the second shader to Glossy. Set Glossy Roughness to 0.35. Switch to the Node Editor. Add a Mix RGB node from the Color submenu. Set the mode to Add from the pop-up menu. Connect it to the Diffuse shader. Add a Layer Weight node from the Input submenu and connect the Fresnel output to the Factor input of the Add node. Set Blend to 0.3. Add an Image Texture node and connect it to Color 1 of the Add node. Click the folder icon and navigate to the Earth Map PNG image available from the description. Set Mapping in the third pop up menu to Sphere. Click Color 2 of the Add node and set it to hex value CCE0FF. Add a Texture Coordinate node from the Input submenu and connect the generated output to the image texture node. Connect the color output of the image texture to displacement of the material output. 
add an RGB curves node and drop it on the line leading to displacement connecting the node. Click the left point on the curve and set the second value to 0 0.5. Click the right point and set the second value to 0 0.51. That's the earth material done. Back to 3D view. In render panel, turn off transparent. Press numpad 0 for camera view, then switch to rendered shading and play with Z rotation of the earth and the sun. OK, looks great. Now we can set up the scene for a nice shot of the Earth rising over the crescent moon. Press Z twice to return to solid shading and numpad 0 to exit camera view. With the Earth selected, set its location in properties to X0, Y minus 220, Z0. Then press S to scale, enter 3.67. All dimensions of the Earth-Moon system are now physically accurate. Press 2 on the keyboard to move to layer 2. Select the Moon and press M, enter 1, to return the Moon to layer 1. Then press 1 on the keyboard to go back to layer 1. Select the Sun and in Lamp panel, Change Strength to 6. In Properties, set Z Rotation to minus 30. Select the camera and in Camera panel, click the Perspective option. Set Focal Length to 200 and End Clipping Distance to 1000 so that the Earth will show up in the view. In the Depth of Field pane, choose the Moon as the focus object and set aperture size to 0 0.0003 for a small amount of distance blur. At frame 1, set location in properties to x minus 0.83, y13, z0, and rotation to x minus 90.2, y90, z0. Press I and set a location rotation keyframe. Press numpad 0 for camera view. Move to the end frame 250 and change X location to minus 1.1 and X rotation to minus 91.2. Press I and set the location rotation keyframe again. In render panel, I'll use the HD720 preset for dimensions. Set samples to 50. For output, click the folder icon to set a location for the movie file. I'll enter the name directly, earthmoon.avi. Choose one of the compressed video formats from the file format menu, Octiora or H.264 are the usual choices. I'll use AVI JPEG RGB at 90% quality. I'll also set the frame rate to 30, but you can leave it at 24 for a slower effect. Now press Ctrl F12 to render. When the render is done, press Ctrl F11 to play the rendered movie. There it is again, a nice mysterious view of movement in space. You can play with it from here, creating any planet with the same methods. Created ones the same as we did the Moon, and otherwise the same as we did the Earth. And with that, we're all done. I hope this has been useful. Do feel free to leave a comment and subscribe for future updates.